in the name of Almighty Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. As Muhammad peace be upon him narrated, if anyone travels on a road in search of knowledge, Almighty Allah will cause him to travel on one of the roads of paradise. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Tarim Su. Thank you very much for watching my videos and your wonderful support to make this channel a grand success. We are a family, a partner. Please share and subscribe our channel if you haven't done so far. We as a team can work together to convert challenges into opportunities and opportunities into success stories. These success stories can be monetized into value addition in the world by large. Thank you very much for your precious time. Today I'm going to discuss my lecture number one, Emergency FCC Unit, Emergency Shutdown Procedure. Before my lecture, I used to read a Quranic verse. Kala Arabi Shrahali Sadri Voyas Sarali Amri Wahlalu Ukdatam Millisani Yaf Kaukali Allahumma Rabbi Zadi Ilmi. O my Lord, open my chest and ease my task for me, and I lose an art from my tongue that they may understand my sin. Allahumma Rabbi Zadi Ilma, O Allah, advance me in my knowledge and to understand. Fluid Carnatic Cracking, FCC Unit. Emergency Shutdown Procedure Lecture Number 1 Okay, FCC Unit Emergency Shutdown Procedure Key Takeaway Points Okay First, we will discuss a behind in burning or after burning Boiler of feed water failure Cooling water failure Electrical power failure Instrument air failure Main air blow failure Main collar bottom pumps failures Oil reversal Plugged risers, loss of feed, slide well failure, the wet gas compressor failure, cutters cooler, lift gas, balco systems, cutters or cooler, flopping air compressor failure, flue gas, steam generator failure, and emergency shutdown, ESD level 2 and 3. Okay, emergency shutdown procedure. The most important aspects of an emergency situation is to put the FCC unit into a safe position. This may involve stopping the raw oil or feed to the reactor for a period of time to correct the problem. If this is necessary, the basic steps to keep in mind at a times are number one, increase a riser lift steam, feed steams and stripping steam. Number two, Bypass raw oil or feed to main column and stop lift gas. Number three, establish a negative reactor regenerator pressure differentials. Number four, lower the reactor pressure. These steps remove the hydrocarbons from the reactor, establish a steam barriers between the regenerator and the fractionation sections, and maintain a good vapor velocity to assist catalyst circulation. When these conditions are established, the problems area can be investigated and corrected. However, it is emphasized that every emergency situation must be handled individually depending upon the conditions existing when the emergency originated. The following recommended procedures provide a sequence of major steps which must be taken the most likely emergency situations. Remember, Bypassing raw oil feed and stopping lift gas is done by bringing the hand controller into the position of a shutdown. That is a raw oil feed stopping lift gas. Number one, behind it burning or after burning. The high efficiency regenerator is designed for a complete carbon monoxide burning, so a small percentage of Access oxygen in the flue gas should always be maintained to prevent a getting behind it a coke burning. However, it is possible that some unusual charge stock change may occur which could cause this problem. It is essential that the coke be burned off the catalyst at the same rate it is produced. This is normally achieved by maintaining a small amount of access oxygen in the regenerator above that which is required to burn the coke. When all the coke is not burned, the unit is behind in burning with the result that the catalyst turns dark, grey or black from coke accumulations. The catalyst also 
losses its activity, decreased the yield of gasoline and LPG. Signs that the unit is behind in burning. Number one, the temperature difference between the flue gases, dilute phase temperatures, dense phase temperatures are less than the usual normal temperature difference. It, it could be a 13 degree Celsius. Number two, catalyst is noticeably dark in the color. Number one, increase the air rate to the regenerator when the coke is burned off. There will then be an increasing amount of excess oxygen in the regenerator and after burning may occur. To avoid this condition, air rate increase should be made gradually. Increase internal catalyst circulation in the regenerator through the recirculation catalyst slide wall. Monitor the regenerator temperature to make sure the dilute phase and the flue gas temperature are increasing. Draw frequent regenerated catalyst samples. Compare these to check the catalyst is becoming whiter, indicating that the accumulated coke is gradually being burned off. In the event that increasing the air rate does not correct the problem, lower the reactor temperatures and reduce the raw oil charge rate. If after burning does start, slowly increase the lower regenerator temperature, which will increase the recirculation catalyst of flow rate. Slowly increase the air rate to the regenerator. Slowly increase the raw oil charge rate and reactor temperature back to normal conditions if they have been reduced. Monitor the regenerator temperature to be sure that the actions taken to control after burning do not put the unit behind in burning again. Make all adjustments slowly and allow adequate time to see their effects in order to avoid over controlling the unit. Okay, next we'll discuss a boiler a feed water a failure. Boiler feed water failure. BFW a boiler feed water is required to remove heat from the flue gases. The reactor vapors and main column bottom product by heat exchange of flue gas steam generator, main column of bottom steam generator, main column bottom product, boiler of feed water exchanges. In case of boiler feed water failure, so we have to take following action. Number one, bypass oil from the reactor riser immediately. This is required to prevent high temperature in the flue gas cooler and downstream pipe. Maximum allowable temperature for the cooler at user 370 degrees Celsius. Okay, number two. Increase lift steam and feed steam to the riser to maintain enough reactor pressure that air cannot enter from the regenerator. Stop the flue gas, lift gas flow and block in the control. Fully close the catalyst slide valves. Number five. Shut down the main air blower as quickly and safely possible to eliminate the hot flue gas. Number five, start flue gas to the light cycle oil steepers overhead the vapor line. Continue running the wet gas compressor on total spill bed. Establish a regenerator reactor pressure balance with the reactor 0.015 part or 2 PSA G higher than the regenerator. Okay, the next topic is. Okay, since the flue gas cooler and main column bottom steam productions are lost, there may be a steam shortage for the refinery. In this case, all steeping steam should be shut off. The main column bottoms of flow should be lowered as possible to reduce steam consumptions by the turbine driven. The riser steams may be reduced as long as a sufficient steam is put in the hold and the reactor pressure higher than the regenerator. Number seven, when the boiler feed water supply is regained, start the main air blower and bring the unit back on steam following the normal startup procedure. Remember, bypassing oil from the reactor, closing lift gas, opening the lift gas steam and closing of the spent and regenerator side valve is performed automatically by activating a hand switch valve. The reset of the 
actions like closing the slide valves at the catus cooler, closing the recirculation slide valves, stopping airflow to the catus cooler, stopping of the main air blower, introduction of flue gas to the LCO steepers, saving steam at the consumption have to be done by operator action. Okay, cooling water failure. If cooling water failure occur for a period exceeding 10 minutes, the unit must be shut down. The largest potential danger is that the wet gas compressor, loss of cooling water to the interstage cooler will result in high suction temperature which can cause a significant damage to the compressor. If cooling water flow cannot be restored, take the following action. Number one, bypass a raw oil from the reactor and shut down the wet gas compressor. Maintain the reactor pressure by adding a fuel gas to the light cycle oil steeper or vapor return line. Number two, increase lift steam and feed steams to the risers and establish low reactor pressure that is slightly higher than that of the regenerator. Stop lift gas to the riser and block in the control room. Number three, continue catus circulation using a riser steam for about 10 minutes, then fully close the regenerator and spend catus slide valves. Number four, use a torch oil to keep the catus in the regenerator hot. Continue internal circulation in the regenerator through the recirculation catus slide valve. Reduce air to the catus cooler to a minimum of flow that is 350 Nm per hour and close catus cooler slide valves. Number five, hold the regenerator at 650 degrees Celsius until a cooling water is restored. Then bring the unit back on steam by performing a startup steps. Okay, electrical power failure. In general, power failure, all process equipment will shut down except those pumps driven by steam turbines or DC motors. The power pack for instrumentation will fail momentarily until the emergency power system cuts in a stored instrument circuit. In the event of power failure, a following immediate action should be taken. Number one, increase lift steam and feed steams to the reactor rises, bypass the raw oil charge and close the raw oil charge wells, reduce the reactor pressure and maintain the regenerator pressure, lower reactor pressure, stop lift gas flow. Number two, with the feed cut out, the reactor, the spent cutters, a slide well differential pressure will decrease causing the wells to close. Spent and regenerated cutters or slide wells should be closed from the control board and visual check to ensure that each wells are fully closed. Close the cutter cooler slide wells and reduce the fluidizing air to the minimum from 350 Nm per hour each. When the raw oil charge is removed and cutter circulation stopped, the main column will cool down rapidly and the hydrocarbon vapors will condense and fill the column bottoms. Pump the column bottoms level to 20 to 40%. Main column bottom product pumps are connected to the emergency power supply system. If power will not be restored, relatively quick bring MS steams and medium pressure steams to the main column of bottom steam. Gas concentration unit or motor driven gas compressors will be shut down. Start fuel gas into the light cycles oil stepping vapor return lines and maintain a 0.6 to 0.8 bar G pressures or 8 to 12 PSAG on the overhead receivers, bleeding a small amount to the flare. Gas concentration column can be blocked in, maintain a level in a pressure if the possible. When power is restored, resume the normal startup procedure for putting the unit back on steam. Okay, next instrument air failure or instrument system failure. Instrument air failure. Loss of instrument air will result in loss of operating air uh, to all controlled valves that forms and the valves will move to their fail positions. If the instrument air is not immediately stored, the unit must be shut. 
Number one, the raw charge to the reactor will be stopped as the raw oil a bypass from the rises to the main column on air fill. Raw oil pump will have to shut down until air is restored. Number two, steam to the reactor riser and the feed distributor open fully on air failures, block in these valves and adjust the bypass globe valve to keep steam going to risers. Lift gas to the risers will fail closed. Number three, main air blower anti-surge snort valves will fail open. The captive slide valves will not fail closed as they are a lacto hydraulic. So they must be closed by operator action. The gas concentration unit, gas compressors, first stage and second stage spillback valves both fail open, which resulted in more gas being spilled back as oil has been removed from the reactor, the compressor should be shut down and blocked in un unless a sufficient fuel gas can be put into a light cycles, oil stippings vapor return light immediately to hold a main column pressure. Okay. The circulating main column bottom steam generations of flow control valves will fail open if instrument air is not totally restored. Close the block valves and use the bypass valves to reduce these flows and minimum cooling in the main car. Secure the gas concentrations unit by blocking in vessels and maintain a column levels. When air is restored, bring the unit back on steam following the normal startup procedure. Remember, in case of instrument air failure, close shut of valves in 2 inch cutters dosing line at the regenerator to prevent a reverse flow of hot catalyst. Okay, my next topic, a main air blow failure. Okay, main air blow failure. Loss of main air blow requires that the unit be shut down. Usually this is due to a problem with the blow's uh, lubal system or malfunction of instrumentation. Number one, immediately bypass oil from the reactor sizes to the main column and start steam into the lower risers to increase a steam of feed distributor. Check that the air blowers discharge check valves closes completely following the blowers shoving to ensure that no catalyst backs into the blow. Okay, fully close the catalyst valves. The valves would eventually close due to loss of temperature pressures across them after the blows fails but they should be manually closed as fast as possible reduce flow dashing air to the cuts coolers to a minimum 350 immediately per hour each start fuel gas into light cycle oil steepest overhead lines as quickly as possible this may allow the wet gas compressor to continue operating with both pressure control a spillback fully open positions maintain reasonable reactor regional pressures to about 135 bar G or 5 PSI G. Decrease main column a pump around flows to hold that the main column short of all but the bottom product flow to storage close of raw oil charge flow to the main column or through the reactors bypass but leave the raw oil a pump running on spillback. Establish the main column bottoms recirculation using the bottom product bypass to the raw oil charge line. If the main column top temperature decreases below 110 degrees Celsius before oil can be charged to the rises, bring medium pressure steam to the main column bottom steam generator to provide heat to the circulating a main column bottom steam. Number six, restart the main column blower when it is ready for service. Begin internal catalyst circulation in the regenerator through the recirculation catalyst slide valves. If the catalyst temperature is above 450 degrees Celsius, use torch oil to heat the inventory back to 650 degrees Celsius. When the catalyst temperature is 650 degrees Celsius, follow the normal startup procedure. Okay. Okay. Conclusion. Today we have discussed behind in burning or after burning, boiler or feed water failure. 
cooling water failure, electrical power failure, instrumentation system failure, remainder blowout failure. My next topic, we are going to discuss a main column, bottoms, pump failure, oil reversal, plugged, risers, loss of feet, slide well failure, wet gas compressor failure, catalyst cooler, lift gas, Belco system, catalyst cooler. So the, the emergency shutdown that would be last one. Okay, these are a few references here. Qatar Petroleum, Doha, Qatar, oil and gas joint operation, Pakistan, World Energy, Outlook, US Geological Survey, Schellenbergers, International Energy Agency, Wikipedia, State Oil Factory, etc. Please do not hesitate to send me your feedback, comments t.pc.dbr at You can also send me your feedback through WhatsApp. Thank you very much for your patience.